direction, what happens is that we uh, feel like, and we fail a lot of times, and we feel let down because man is not our source that we should believe in. Oftentimes we look at this world and we think through all the conveniences of this world, how you can just flip on a TV and go all around the world. We've been so desensitized by, by murders and desensitized about events that are taking place that we, it's hard to believe anything that we see or read in this world today. We don't know if what we're reading is true. We don't know what we're reading, if it's propaganda. We don't know. But the reality is the thing that we do know <coughs> is that this word is still the truth. Amen. The world is still the truth. The word of God is still the truth. And we have to understand that our faith in man has to dis dissipate and we have to learn how to trust in God, because it's the word <coughs> the alive in us that helps us, and it helps us and it restores us, and it strengthens who we are in our faith in God. One thing that we look at in storms of life is a lot of times we feel disconnected. When we go through storms, when we go through trial, one of the main things is that we get so disoriented in life, we don't know which way to go. Have you ever been there? So disoriented by the situations that we're facing. We don't know what the right answer is. We don't know the situation at hand and how to deal with it effectively. But one thing that I encourage you to do is that in spite of all these things, is that we have to keep God center of our lives. In spite of what's heading on, when we have faith to overcome, we have to keep God in the center. So many times... I have seen Christians who walk away from the faith and walk away from God because they did not keep Him the center of their lives. They didn't keep Him where He should be. We should never run away from God. We should always run to Him. And I believe that what we have to do is that when situations come, when circumstances come, we understand that our weapons are not uh, 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 physical or our uh, weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty. And we understand that principalities and that the enemy is at work. We need to run to our Savior. We need to get under the shadow of the Almighty, under His, uh, uh, under His wings, and allow God to use and help us in these troublesome times. We have to keep God centered when it becomes the most difficult thing to do. I don't know about you, but we have examples of men in our Bibles and ladies in our Bibles who could have easily given up, who could have easily turned around and said, it's not worth it, it's not worth the pain, it's not worth the struggle. <clears throat> but I believe with all my heart, they turned to God, their source of their strength. And I don't know about you today. But I had uh, to learn this the hard way throughout my ministry. Regardless of what comes against me, regardless of the situations that are at hand, I had to learn how to keep God in the center of my life. Today, we all struggle. We all go through difficult situations. None of us are exempt from events in life that weigh us down. None of us have the trademark on how to overcome difficult things in our life. But one thing that we should all do as Christians is to understand that He is our first source and strength that we should go to. He Himself should be the very first thing that we acknowledge Him in the presence of all the difficult situations and allow Him to run through our lives and to come into our heart and to help us in these situations. There's been many times in my life where I've had to stop what I was doing and say, okay, Holy Spirit, 
I need you in this hour. I need you in this moment. I need you in this time. I take a moment to recognize, God, I cannot do this by myself. And when all of the things and the troubles come, I'm going to focus on Him. I'm going to trust in Him. I'm going to stand with Him. I'm going to walk with Him. I'm going to see. I am going to walk, see, and I'm going to overcome. It's a mentality of the believer that though they slay me, Yet I will trust him. See, David was there because David was running from his life, for his life. <clears throat> he comes to a place of a priest. The priest gives him a sword. It wasn't just a sword, it was David's or David's sword, which he killed Goliath, Goliath's sword. And I believe when he was running for his life, that was God trying to show him and to help him. To remember that the biggest giant in his life was slain by God through him. To remind him that the most difficult times in our life, sometimes we have to go and look at the goodness of God in our past. There's been many times in my life where I thought I was going through a very difficult situation. I wondered, God, where are you? And I've oftentimes have walked and, 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 and really just focused on getting through from day to day. Oftentimes, I didn't get a resolution that I thought would satisfy me. I thought that it was lost forever. I just collected my losses, and I just collected all that I had, and I just tried my very best to move forward as best I knew how. But I look back in those times when I felt like I failed, when I felt like people failed me, when I felt like situations uh, that I was wronged in, and I look back now, I can see the hand of God even in those situations in my life. What I've learned is that God speaks through us through every situation. God gives us points in our lives for us to learn from. And if we run away from Him, we're running away from the best thing, the answer to all of our heart's needs and all that uh, we can to overcome and to heal. So when we look at this and we keep God center. We don't have to know exactly what the outcome is going to look like because there's times when I thought that I would be all right and there's times uh, when I thought that I wouldn't make it. Even those times that I thought I'd be all right, it turned out worse than what I thought. And the times that I didn't think I was going to make it all at all, God came in and it changed it and it made me think, you know what? I got another minute. I got another hour. I got another breath. I got another day. I can overcome. I'm here to tell somebody today that you're, my, you may feel that you are in your darkest hour. You may feel as though everything is coming against you, but I'm encouraging you to keep God in the center of your life. He is the only uh, answer to what you're going through today. Don't run away from Him. Run to Him. That is the only way you will be able to overcome Another thing that comes to mind is that we have to hold on to the promises of God. There's a lot of times in our life that we cry out to God and we ask God for things, to do certain things in our life, different aspects, spiritual aspects, health-wise, financial-wise, family-wise, or even in our personal lives. That we cry out to God and we say, God, I need you to move. And we've got a word from the Lord. And we hold on to that word and to his promises to us. Sometimes we get so caught up on our timetable that we don't realize that God don't work in our time. He works in his Sometimes we want to hurry life along and we want to get to the solution. We want to go from A to B and we want to get out the best we can and we want it to, take, uh, to come out to our advantage. There's nothing wrong of wanting things to come out to our advantage. What is wrong is when we begin to man try to manipulate and try to do things on our own to not allow God to work in the midst of the situation. That's when people get hurt. That's when lives change. That's when situations become worse than what they were meant to be. Sometimes it's us in our own demise. It's us in our own things that we do in our life. 
that sometimes withholds the promises until we can mature within ourselves, until we can get ourselves to where God can use us and God can give us what He has promised us. See, the intent of God with the Israelites was just a couple of weeks' walk and a couple of weeks' journey that wound up taking over 40 or taking over 40 years. It was because of their unwillingness to listen, their unwillingness to do what God had commanded to do. God had all the provisions, and God told them that there was a promised land. But we have to be, and they had to be willing to submit their lives totally to God and trust in Him. We see the stories that come out of this journey. We see the situations that develop because they was unfaithful to God and they were hungry to go back to Egypt and to bring Egypt uh, back into the promised land. And we realize that, that those two worlds cannot collide. I'm here to tell you today that the world and God cannot collide together. You can't live in the world and expect to be blessed. You can't live in the world and expect all of the promises of God. But what you can do is submit your life totally to God and trust in Him and separate yourself from the worldly things in this life and allow God to use it so you can receive or so that you can receive the blessings that God has for you. Faith to overcome. Most of us have been Christians for a long time in this building. A lot of us have experienced tragedy in some way, shape, or form. All of us in this building has been hurt by somebody. Amen. All of us in this building have learned hard lessons in life. Some of us are still stuck in our past because we're never really able to get over the hurt and the pain of our past. But one thing we must do is we must realize that we can't control what other people think, say, or do. But we can control how we respond, how we live our life, how we react to those things that come against us. We can either get upset and try to handle them on our own, or we can keep God in the center and we can hold on to His promises that He tells us that He will go with us always until the ends of the earth. The promise not to ever leave us or forsake us. The promise to turn it out to our good so that we can grow and bear fruit for Him. I'm telling you today, even though we feel like sometimes that we're walking in death's shadow, even sometimes when we feel like we're all alone, we need to hold on to what God says. We need to trust in Him and hold on to His promises to allow Him to work on our behalf. Faith that overcomes is saying, you know what? I don't know the answers. I really don't even know the outcome. But what I do know is that greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. We have to hold on to the promises of God. You see, we see it all in the New Testament. We see the apostles in Acts. The early disciples faced persecution after persecution for their faith in God and the resurrected Christ. But they unwaveringly kept the faith and followed after Him. In the situations in our life, we must understand. I know we deal with our emotions. I've had to deal with a lot of emotions these last few weeks. But one thing that I understand and God put it in place in me, I've talked about this behind my pulpit a long, long time, about a peace that passes understanding. I don't understand a lot of things. I don't understand why some things happen to, to, to certain people and other things happen to others. But one thing I do know is that if I keep God's center, 
and I hold on to his promises that I can have a peace that passes all understanding. I don't know how I could stand up. I've heard several people say, I don't know how you're dealing with what you're going through. I'm telling you as your pastor how I'm dealing with it is I'm keeping God first. I'm going to hold on to his promises and I'm going to stay in his will. Everything else can go away. Everything else can deteriorate. But I'm going to hold on to the blood-stained banner of Jesus. Jesus Christ because he is truly the only one that gives me the peace that I need in my heart. And when we realize I'm not trying to say to you that, that, that I'm more religious than you or that I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a better or a different level than you are. What I'm saying is I've realized where my source and where my help come from. They come from God come from Jesus who died on the cross forgave me of my sins that put me in right standing with God where I can approach the throne broadly I can tell God all my hurts I can tell God all the situations that I deal with I can cry out to him I can get upset I can tell him all about it but yet his love never changes for me he's patient with me he loves me he helps me uh, even when I'm uh, uh, upset or don't know the answer he's still there to wrap his arms around me and let me know that he is still there yeah, I am no different from any one of you and I tell you if you're going through that problem today if you're going through a situation today where you feel that there is no hope just hang on a little longer just keep him first amen hold on to his promises and he will come through for you he'll come through for you I don't have all of the answers but one thing I do I do this I believe in God. I believe in His so sovereignty. I believe in His Lordship. I believe that He is working on my behalf. One of the hardest things you ever do in life sometimes is hold your tongue. Amen. But it is one of the most productive things you can do in the midst of of a storm. See, we want to lash out and we want to talk and we want to get upset and tell people how I feel. But feelings don't get you anywhere. It's the power and the anointing of God and our faith in Him that moves the mountain. Jesus tells us that if we just have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, Be thou removed to the sea. The smallest grain of faith moves mountains. We have been so desensitized in our Christian walk that we really truly have forgotten how to live by faith. For everything that happens in our life, there has to be an answer. Somebody behind the scenes. Somebody manipulated. We can't, it's hard for us to believe that God still heals that God still delivers because we look and we think about the negative things in life, but God is saying, you trust in Him. God will reveal Himself to you that when we walk with Him, that God will begin to move on our, on our behalf. That's the reason why these men who put God first, who trusted in Him, even in the hardest times, that's why they stood before crowds and declared God as sovereign and Jesus is Lord and our Savior. They declared even the midst of being tormented and and, and, and all of the things that happened to them, they declared Jesus Christ. Uh, that's the reason why when they walked, uh, even their shadows began to heal those people. It's because the anointing of God, them realizing that God is greater than anything that we will ever face in our life. So how do we have the faith to overcome? The faith to overcome takes courage. Faith to overcome takes courage to stand for what is right. To stand for what is true. To stand for God no matter what comes. Today as Dustin comes, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you. This Pastor Appreciation Day, I, I'm so thankful for the suit. That's suit number two since I lost my weight, and I'm very thankful for that. 
But what I'm most thankful for is that these last few weeks, mainly the last four years, the dynamics of my family has drastically changed. Some people call it storms. It reminded me of a story that's in Mark chapter 4. It was one evening Jesus came to his disciples, to his disciples. He told them, he said, let's cross to the other side. And Jesus got in the boat and they started on their way. All of a sudden, the scenery began to change. Storm clouds gathered. Winds began to blow. The waves began to crash against a small boat. Now the disciples, when you begin to study this, disciples done everything that they know to do. But they couldn't prevent the water from getting in the boat. The Lord reminded me life's journey is always changing. There's times when there's blue skies, the sun is shining, the waters are calm, the sun's on your face, and you're resting in the goodness of And there's sometimes we don't even notice the little cloud that begins to develop. We don't notice the wind beginning to pick up. And the blue becomes gray. And a storm in our life. Reminded why these men were doing the very best they could to keep this boat afloat. Jesus was in the back. The disciples woke him up. And they said, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Have you ever felt that way in the storm that you're facing? Lord, are you just going to let this happen? Are you just going to let me lose everything? Are you just going to let this person win? Are you going to let this situation destroy me? But it says this in the Bible, he woke up, he rebuked the wind, he said to the waves, peace be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, there was a great calm. And then Jesus asked them, why are you? Do you still have no faith? So you must understand, these disciples were with Jesus. They've seen the lame walk, they've seen the blind see, the deaf to hear, the crippled, the paralyzed, the dead. They've seen it all. It's easy to see Jesus on a bright sunny day. But it's in the storms of life when the waves are crashing in the boat.
that your faith is shaken. But I'm here to tell you today, no matter how rocky your boat is, Jesus lives inside of you. He's still in that boat. They had to do something. They had to stop what they were doing. They had to go to Jesus. They had to wake him up and say, do you care that we not drown? See, Jesus represents the peace that we can have in our boat of life. That even when the waters are great, we can have that peace. Because once it's all said and done, if Jesus is the center, if you're holding on to his promises, no matter how rocky it gets, you have the power in you through the blood of Jesus Christ to say, peace, be still. Winds cease. Because that same Jesus that calmed the storm and this word is the same Jesus that's with you today. That if you have faith, you can overcome any obstacle in your life.